Hey guys, welcome to the next episode of the Junk Drawer Show Sports Edition, where we talk about our NFL podcast. Uh, I hope you enjoy the episode. We're doing a new format where we talk about subjects and kind of break them down into smaller chunks so that it's a little easier for you guys to digest. If you have anything in particular you'd like for us to talk about or weigh in on, uh, fantasy football questions, facts, figures, anything like that, let us know down in the comments, guys, and enjoy. We are here with our resident NFL experts, and I use that term as loosely as humanly possible. <laughs> I feel it. Craig, I feel that a, way. You're a Dolphins fan, so that automatically just puts you down... <laughs> Whoa, I don't think you understand that we had the greatest draft in NFL history. Fact. Uh, (laughs) Had the greatest uh, draft maybe in Dolphin history. Um, But we will get into that momentarily, momentarily. So with me uh, this week, much like uh, last week, we have Craig Papa Brooks and Mike Mustache Spillane. But but you shouldn't because some people with poor resolution won't see that. (laughs) <laughs> right. If they don't have 1080p, you can't see that 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 sorry excuse for facial hair, that not milk moustache. Yeah, that you guys is... are not. You're not telling me anything I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Like... But why do folks like you? Mike Thomas does this, so I can say this. Why do folks like you try to <laughs> throw that? And I mean well, it in off, all the inflection. I mean. That. I, first off, the way you're saying it sounds racist. I know it's why not. Why do you people it sound? Yeah. <laughs> um, no, honestly, my my all of my facial hair just grows in like patchy and neck beardy and gross. Like it's non-existent. The it only thing that started to grow head. with any kind of length is the mustache. But I'm so naturally blonde that you won't see that this is actually very long right now. It's like at least the length of what Pat has. It's just that fucking light and clear. Bad. Yeah. Bad. Dude, Here's I'm thing. trying. I'll, I'll throw you. I'll throw you a comp. I'll throw you a comp. You've got wonderful skin tone, a beautiful palette for tattoos, and you have some of the coolest tattoos I have ever seen. That's a fact. Take that thing off your lip. It's bad. <laughs> it's disgusting. I told you. I told you the truth, so you know I'm not lying. I started with truth. That those tattoos are phenomenal. Your leg is amazing. Get it off your face. She'll Thank leave you. you. She will I leave see. you over that. <laughs> No, the the game plan is as soon as we're allowed to go back to the office, it's gone. Like, no, I think you could just wipe it off. It's terrible. Just do this, and they'll fall off. Just still there. unattach the Velcro, and it'll come right off. It's not. Pistachio. Oh, Good tattoos. Bad facial hair. Totally, totally didn't get one the other day. That was illegal. Anyways, they're gonna so, open up soon. Twenty five percent. What? No, I not yet. They're to... excluded. I know. I want to start with the man that's probably the most excited in here about his team's draft. Craig, Bro- Craig Brooks, talk to me. Talk to me about the Miami Dolphins draft. Just just them. Let's start with Miami. I want to start, and then we'll go to Mike about the Giants. Talk to me about fair. the Dolphins draft. Tell me, me why my you. hot take was wrong. What do you mean your hot take was wrong? My he hot take was that the Dolphins were going to be the Giants – Oh, I, think I was. It feels good that I was right because I did. I, I I said it as a what I hoped, but I knew that they could do it. I knew it was possible. They they lasted through the nonsense of that the Lions were trying to field the pick. The um, who was right before them? They were trying to shop the pick too. Giants. The Giants. But here's why I'm hyped as hell. We needed a quarterback, so let's just start there. Yeah, injury concerns. Technically, every human on earth has injury concerns. I trip frequently. Uh, Anything can happen to anybody. We got the guy that if he didn't have his hip bone come out his body, it went outside the body. If that had not happened, he would have been the number one across the board in any of the last two, this draft or last draft. People would have said he is absolutely the most talented guy. He has that it factor. We talked about Russell Wilson last week. I think it's there. I think you can see those comparisons. He's uh, a little taller than a Kyler Murray who came in last year, made a difference, can move, can throw, can see the field. I'm excited about Tua. And he came into a situation where I think, I hope, Brian Flores knows I don't need to start this guy right this second. And it looks like they're going to trot out. Fitzpatrick, let him do what he does. Rosen's going to get cut skis. He's bye. Like, see ya. Poor bastard got drafted 10th two seasons ago. 
uh, last season, sorry, and it just just didn't work out. Just cannot work out. So that's one. The excitement is at a high because I literally got my guy, and I think a guy that, and I will say the caveat is, if he stays healthy, he's a just really high ceiling. And and the floor is medium. The floor is not low. His floor is is higher than some of like our low level starters, right? Just because yeah. he can move, he's so dynamic. Mobility so, and he's got a good arm. It's not he doesn't have you know like Fitzpatrick is limited in what he can do because he can move, but he, his arm is not super. Here's he's something. He's also like crazy. fifty. So <laughs> here's great beard though. Two is young. He's a young guy, but he all, also already knows how to win, and that's important. Uh, go back in history of Dolphins quarterbacks and drafts. Um, even Marino, who played for Pitt, wasn't a national champion. Wasn't that level of it. And I know not a lot of guys are national champions. I get that. But there's rare air there. And there's there's something about being in those situations. You can see what Deshaun Watson is capable of, you know. And I know it doesn't mean across the board. There's obviously Jameis Winston. He won a title. He won a Heisman. But I think that kid's talented. I really do. I think he's been um, undisciplined, right? And he throws a lot of picks. But the talent's there. So let me get off Tua because I love Tua. And I'll say before I end it. I really like our whole first round because Austin Jackson, while not one of the top four linemen, because it was too late, it was too late. They were already gone. Not only is he a beast, he's a beast from USC, but he's like a good guy. I don't know if you saw the sports center feature. He donated his bone marrow to his sister who is only alive now because of that. And he did it like before a season. And that could be a devastating like strength drain and all kinds of stuff that could happen. There are complications with it that could have happened. The risk he took on his career, I like guys like that. I like guys like Christian Wilkins that we got last year that teaches school. I don't know if you knew that. He teaches in his spare time as a sub teacher. Like I like there, there's something to say about a six foot five, six foot six, three hundred pound guy with the kind of character that you don't expect from some of the nonsense out there in the NFL. I was surprised with our last pick in the first round. I cannot pronounce his name, but he is a talented Auburn cornerback, right? So I'm I'm really happy with what they did. They shored up a lot of deep line picks, a couple of guards. They went on the defense side. I think we got the best long snapper in the universe, so I think that's worth <laughs> commenting on. I mean, you take a risk sometimes, but Tua, Tua and Austin Jackson made it. I'm sorry. I, they that that is a at worst a minus grade. And I'm if I'm being like the people on the internet, for me it was an A plus because the second they got Tua and a lineman, I was over the moon. But even some of the pundits have to give that an A minus B plus for sure. And so what I'll say is you and I have talked uh, quite a bit throughout our time together and our, our football watching time together, which has been many years now. Oh, yeah. And you've been saying for a long time, the dolphins needed an unsexy draft. This draft, I think other than the Tua pick, other I than think Tua. you could say is not a sexy draft, no. but so for those of you that don't know or and aren't devout Miami Dolphins followers, after Tua, they went offensive tackle, corner, guard, defensive tackle, safety, guard, defensive end, which is an edge now, mm-hmm. uh, outside linebacker, long snapper, and wide receiver. So you two skill positions? Yeah, because here's the thing. Go ahead, Mike. Go ahead. And, and I was going to say, just to add on to that, that last wide receiver – was actually the guy who played quarterback at Navy. So he's more of a gadget player, if anything. Right. So just tossing that out there. I do think we have a lot of talented young men on the Dolphins squad. Devontae Parker moving into the one spot is exciting. We there, there was Grant was there last year making moves happen on the receiver side. We were good there. That line is everything. And no one is trying to say that the Dolphins are going to win that division in 2020. That's not the game plan. I think it's obvious by how they drafted that they're finally serious about a build. They're finally serious about let's sprinkle the foundation. Next year we have additional picks as well. I think we have two in the first, two in the second. There's the, because of we did all these deals this last year. We don't have three, but I do think there's a second first round pick. So we're going to be in 2022 super relevant in my opinion. And there's a small chance next year – because if the Patriots really dive and the Bills can't take that opportunity, I ignore the Jets. Just absolutely ignore them. <laughs> if the Bills don't level up, the Patriots are going to dive, and Tua is the truth. They could be relevant next year. Not this season. Not this season. So 
let me throw you a curveball before we get to Mike, because I feel like we've spent some decent time on the Dolphins, and I'm excited about their draft, and I'm excited that you're excited. What if, in in this crazy world, you guys take five and 18 and move up to two, take Chase Young, even all three picks, and you move up, you get Chase Young, and next year, number one pick, Trevor Lawrence. Yeah. Does, if, if. If Miami doesn't do great this year and you guys are still in picking in that one, two, three, four spot, would you have rather gotten the de facto best guy in this draft to go after Trevor Lawrence and lose for Lawrence? I'm going to coin it now. Yeah. Um, or would you have rather Tua go through that first year of growing pains with a very young Austin Jackson, with a very young guard group, a very young receiver core, and then have a year under the belt? Or would you rather have Trevor Lawrence, who a lot of people are saying Peyton Manning-ish? You bring up a fair question, and, and our mutual friend Cuba would all day have said he wanted anyone and Trevor. He he wasn't on Tua. I am on the other side. And even in that scenario, and I happen to agree with you that Chase Young was the talent of the draft. It, it's not just you. People felt that way. This, oh, this yeah. was a potential generational talent at the, at the position that is such a— disruptor that your defense can get you to the 13 wins and you can suck on offense. Like that's how big the edge has become. They changed the damn, you said it. They changed the wording. It's not defensive end anymore. It's edge because they're coming off the edge. Sacks are a big deal. Now sacks are the new touchdown pass of the NFL. People, we you could argue an uh, uh, elite edge rusher is just as important, if not slightly less important than a quarterback. It's right after it because Von Miller won that Broncos title one of, one of the super bowl yep. Peyton manning didn't so and he says that he would like openly admit that but in your in your example it's chase young trevor lawrence and a year of less growth to uh, austin jackson this bevy of like unsexy but i think foundational picks i'm there i'm there still because i see it work for the chiefs i see it work for baltimore i see it work for teams that are not what what happened to peyton manning when he came in the league, and you know he's near and dear to my heart. Oh yeah. He, he was put in immediately, and he had the worst statistic, one of the worst statistical rookie seasons ever. Still holds the rookie record for interceptions. Trevor Lawrence has the name and the no injury. He's going to get thrown to the wolves as well. Tua, the injury is a benefit to us now that they may just want to slow the process. I like that as an NFL guy. You you get more guys that benefit from time then don't. Peyton Manning's the anomaly. The number one pick that immediately goes in and becomes Hall of Fame, two-time, two-different team title. For all of those, there's 19 Achilles Smiths. There's, You know what I mean? There's so many that came in and floundered there. I'm not saying Trevor's going to be bad. I'm saying he's going to be thrown to the fire. Tua gets that year of experience in NFL real experience. Doesn't mean he has to play. Doesn't mean he has to start. You're getting the practice. You're getting the scrimmage. I'm happy. I'm very happy. All right, so moving on from Miami, which I feel like we've dissected that quite well, and I'm sure we'll get back to it. Okay. Mike? I was going to say, because I have some Miami Miami talking points I'd like to jump you in wanna, If you want to throw out some Miami talking points, I know Craig would love to smush your brain. Well, no, no. First, so I want to say, I think he's... And, and cut just this segment and just call it Miami. I'll share that shit. I'll get Cuba <laughs> on it. I'll make him send it to his brother-in-law that works for ESPN. <laughs> Sounds good. They need new podcasts. They're probably getting ready to cancel Lebetard, so... Oh, definitely. And the other one, another one's going too. I'm not sure what the other one is, but I, I don't, don't know, know the names, but two of their big personalities are going to CBS. But anywho, uh, first, I think you're spot on with Trevor Lawrence. Uh, and uh, the only, I, 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 my thing with him is watching college football. You never, when Tua was in a starting role, you never watched him flounder at times. Never. Trevor Lawrence, you have. There's been games where Trevor Lawrence That's has good. struggled. And sometimes it's against inferior competition. So I think that's something that even though he might have more overall talent, that's something that to me, I think is something to worry about. Point number two, the most underrated move of the entire Dolphins draft is the fact that you traded for Matt Breida. I think that's something that you guys need to go ahead and keep tabs on. I think that's going to, because you guys gave up what a fourth round pick for him, something the value of running backs in the NFL right now is shockingly low. We've talked oh. – I think we actually talked about this last year. Like literally – Saquon. We said, 
it it stayed Sa- well Saquon's. I mean, ama- I well, love and that's the thing is like everybody thought the number Giants taking Saquon number two was a mistake, and I stand by the fact I do oh not believe God. that. No, it, it's a mistake that he wasn't the, the the one. He's so good, but running backs as a whole, and I know we'll get to this if you go to other teams, but running backs as a whole have de- been devalued for some reason because the game became a, an air it out style. But you still see elite running backs are parts of the reason, big parts of the reason, that those teams are relevant. Those teams can do what they do. Yeah. So I, I'm excited. We, we have Jordan Howard and Matt Breda before our young guns. You know what I mean? So we have some veterans in there. No, I am not predicting an AFC East title here. I'm just saying we're going to win a few games enough to probably not have to worry about having the one, two, three pick middle, middle of the pack there, maybe eighth, ninth, 10th. We had the trades, extra picks, shore the lineup again. And then you snag some skill, some second round wide receiver. You know, these guys come out of nowhere and become big deals. Wide receivers so deep these days because everyone's airing it out. We'll be, we're going to be something. I'm telling you, it's a full cycle here. We're 50 years. It's going to be the 50-year anniversary, 2022. We're making the playoffs, and we're making noise. Yeah, no, I think uh, I, I think you you can be onto something there. Um, I, and what I would add to that too um, is that I just brain farted and lost my train of thought. Um, the so threw you off. No, no. Now I remember what you it saw was. a glimpse it's of it. Yeah. And you were like, Ugh. his body's resources. It's so <laughs> weak. His whole body, all the heat, all the energy <laughs> has to push like that Play-Doh thing you had as a kid that extrudes. <laughs> it's just forcing and he's dying inside. He's like, I'm always hungry. Why am I throwing this? Shave it off. Get it off your face. <laughs> Sorry. Anywho. Jack. The AFC East is going to be turning into what the NFC East has been for years. 11%. That's where we're at right now. AFC because, East. yeah, exactly. Because of the fact that now you look at what you have there, you have a Tom Brady list New England Patriots that wow. is, as of right now, it looks like is going to be led by Jarrett Stidham. Get it. I love that, by the way. I. Where the Destroyer. Yeah, and then you have the Bills, who kind of were up on the up and up last year. I, and like, they I, like, the Bills. I like the Bills. I think the Bills are competitive. Yeah, no, the Bills make some moves that I enjoy. Um, the Jets that are the Jets, so, you know, free I was, space. I was, I was shit-talking, but don't you agree that I, I think Darnold has a lot of potential? I think that team actually <laughs> has potential. And I love what you're saying because as a fan, even though, yeah, it would be great if the Dolphins just won all the time, that's not real. But our division being legit is exciting. The games make more prime time. There's more talk about it. NFC East always gets love because you got the Dallas Cowboys in there. You got the Eagles in there. They just won a title. The Giants are in New York. They're a big deal. The AFC East, other than the Patriots, is a, is a a has been a laughing stock. And I just don't think that's going to be the case in the near future. No, and I, I agree with you because like what I was going to say with the Jets, it's like if you're playing bingo, Jets, their free space is disappointment. Like that's just kind of the way that it is. And then the Dolphins right now, I think the Dolphins are going to be starting that slight upward trajectory. It's going to take a little bit of time, but I think they're going to get there. So I yeah. think the AFC East is going to start to become a more interesting competitive division. But at the same time, it might be like the NFC East and the fact where nine and seven might win the whole thing. Right. So, because they, they start knocking on each other like it's yeah. going to be tough to beat the Bills twice. It, yep. We always used to see we like I'm on the team. But the Dolphins used to always steal one of the Patriots games every year, every year. The Bills have gotten tougher. The Jets are now maybe a split ski. So that's the beauty of the NFC East is you have good teams that know how to win titles, right? Yeah. And all, all three no, – the Redskins were – I think we have to go back to the late 80s. Maybe, no, maybe 91, the Doug Williams one. But all of, the AF, uh, all of the NFC East has won titles in our lifetimes, all of them. That is not the case by far for the AFC East. The Jets haven't won since Namath. The, the Dolphins haven't won since Super Bowl eight or whatever. So the Bills it, never have. Never. Not one. So it, it's so different and so exciting as a fan to potentially be in a in a division that is relevant to watch.